Do you have a sick plant? Have you ever wondered what causes a plant to become unhealthy? In this video, we're going to talk about what causes a plant disease. Howdy, I'm Dr. Greg Church. I'm a plant pathologist. I focus on plant diseases and I work to make plants healthy. So what is a plant disease? Uh, it's a continuous condition uh, that interferes with the normal physiological processes of a plant resulting in characteristic symptoms. There are a variety of things that cause plant diseases. Uh, in the broad sense, that includes infectious disease, injury, and disorders. We're going to go through each of these to have a better understanding of what causes plant disease. In this diagram, we have a variety of causes of plant diseases. Uh, we have infectious diseases, uh, which are caused by fungi, bacteria, viruses, parasitic plants, nematodes. And then we have injury that's caused by insects, mites, herbivores, uh, genetic defects, mechanical injury. And then we have disorders caused by pollutants, chemical toxicity, soil moisture extremes, temperature extremes, nutrient deficiencies, and soil properties that can impact the health of a plant. On the right side of this chart, we have living or biotic causes of disease. And on the left side of the chart, we have non-living or abiotic causes of disease. Fungi cause the majority of infectious diseases. They account for about 85% of all known diseases of plants. Majority of fungi are actually beneficial. They're actually decomposers and they help to decompose organic matter in the environment to recycle nutrients so that plants and other organisms can utilize those nutrients. Some characteristics of fungi is that they absorb nutrients. They're multicellular. Fungi are made up of tubular filaments called hyphae. Um, they reproduce by spores and they develop structures such as sclerotia to survive harsh environments. Bacteria cause a variety of diseases in plants. Some characteristics of bacteria is that they are single-celled organisms. They absorb nutrients. Uh, they reproduce by fission. And they survive through dormancy. Bacteria require wounds or other uh, natural openings in plants in order to infect the plant. They usually require uh, free moisture or water, like rainfall, uh, to disseminate and to allow them to move and infect plants. A bacteria cause disease such as leaf spots. Uh, crown gall is one common disease caused by bacteria. Fire blight is another. And viruses can cause disease as well. Some characteristics of viruses is they're subcellular. They're actually made of DNA or RNA surrounded by a protein coat. They infect the plant through vectors, mechanical injury, Viruses typically cause disease that is systemic, meaning it's throughout the plant. So in different plant parts, it causes um, different symptoms, like a ring spot is a common symptom of certain viruses, and that causes a yellowing of normally green tissue or chlorosis uh, in circular rings. And that can occur in the leaves or it can occur in the fruit. Uh, viruses can also cause abnormal growth, such as in the disease called rose rosette disease. Another disease or parasite of plants is actually another plant. Uh, parasitic plants will obtain all or some of their nutrients from the host plant. Many parasitic plants do not have their own chlorophyll, and so they rely heavily on their host plant. The most well-known parasitic plant is mistletoe. Nematodes can cause disease. Uh, we refer to these type of nematodes as herbivores or plant parasitic nematodes. Uh, there are a lot of nematodes that are beneficial, uh, but in this case, they attack plants. So nematodes are microscopic roundworms, so they are animals. Uh, they're usually found in the soil, but some species actually attack the leaves and stems. They do reproduce by eggs. In the broad sense, Insects cause problems or diseases of plants. In the narrow sense, we really refer to it as injury 
or infestation of a plant because typically it's not a continuous irritation of the plant. There are a variety of different types of insects that cause disease. Scale insect, bagworms, caterpillars. There are a large number of mites that cause problems or injury to plants. There are types of gall-forming insects that cause uh, galls to form on leaves, stems, and other parts of the plant. There are also spider mites that are very common on a variety of different types of plants. Any gardener is going to recognize that herbivores can cause problems in plants. Obviously, the rabbit is often known to cause problems uh, feeding on the plant. The genetics of plants actually play a large role in the health of plants, and genetic defects can develop, uh, such as uh, fasciation. Now, there are a variety of different types of genetic defects affecting all portions of the plant. Mechanical injury can cause problems in plants. For, for example, uh, damage to the bark or splitting of limbs, um, you know, construction injury caused by machinery uh, or garden tools. Pollutants can cause problems with plants. Air pollution uh, can affect the health of plants. Chemical spills or uh, contaminated groundwater or surface water can affect the health of plants. Chemical toxicity can cause injury to plants. Uh, one of the most common thing in the urban environment is the misuse of pesticides, namely herbicides. If the, if the herbicide is allowed to drift or is misapplied to where it reaches a non-target plant or one that's not tolerant of that herbicide, uh, particularly trees, are often injured by herbicides that are applied to the lawn. One of the most common problems of, that affect plants is actually soil moisture. Particularly the lack of soil moisture causes wilting. But actually most people don't realize that overwatering causes the same symptoms and the, the roots actually don't work properly when the soil is saturated. A variety of different symptoms can develop in response to improper soil moisture, leaf scorching, wilting, um, and other issues. This can actually lead to infectious disease uh, such as root rot. Temperature can cause problems in plants, uh, particularly extreme temperatures uh, such as extreme heat. Here in North Texas we experience a lot of temperature extremes, particularly the heat. And when a plant is not well adapted to the high temperatures, it can cause the symptoms of water stress. Even if the plant does have proper amount of soil moisture, uh, it just can't keep up with the amount of water loss through transpiration. It will start to experience marginal leaf scourge, wilting, etc. Overwatering um, is often uh, the case in heavy soils or clay soils, which we do have here in North Texas, and that can lead to root rot and other problems. Plants require a lot of different nutrients, macronutrients, secondary nutrients, and micronutrients, and they require them in different amounts for different plants. Type of soil or soil pH can affect the availability of nutrients. So when plants develop these nutrient deficiencies, there is a recognizable symptom that develops in their leaves. We use those symptoms to identify the nutrient that is deficient and try to correct that to applying nutrients. Related to nutrient deficiency is soil properties. The properties of the soil affect the plant health. Soil properties include the texture of the soil, so it's the soil type, whether it's a clay, sand, silt, or some combination of those. Uh, that can affect uh, nutrients, it can affect uh, water infiltration rates, uh, it can affect the drainage of the soil. Most plants prefer a well-drained soil uh, because they don't want to sit in that saturated soil for very long. However, some plants are well adapted to it uh, because they're adapted to a lowland, swampy type area or near the river bank. So this video was just to give you an introduction to the common causes of plant problems or diseases. In the following video, we'll take a look at how we go about diagnosing a plant disease. Hopefully you benefited from this video. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm just getting started with this and I have many ideas for the future. 
uh, leave a comment uh, so that I can get some feedback. And if you have any specific requests for topics, I appreciate it.